And introducing with a record of zero wins and 472 losses, Matthew Geography is Everything Crawford! There's not really a lot of stuff to talk about IDEO. You will forgive me if I go a little bit overboard on this. He is my favorite member of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. Okay, that's a lie. I don't think he's anybody. Is IDEO anybody's favorite member of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet? I'm not judging. I'm not. I'm just like, could you explain your reason why he's your favorite? Because he didn't really do a lot. He looks cool. I'll give it to you. He's the only boxer that can make the super thick mascara look work. So, there's that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm ready for the title bout tonight. Okay, I don't know anything about boxing. My knowledge of boxing literally begins with Mike Tyson's Punch-Out on NES and ends with the Rocky movies. Except for the fifth one, okay? That's all I got. So if you're any sort of boxer, whether it be in school or, hey, who knows? Maybe you are training to become a professional boxer, in which case, more power to you. But I don't know crap, okay? So we're just gonna go along here and talk about a guy with long arms that has the ability to punch really hard, okay? that That's pretty much Ideo's character, okay? So, um, Ideo is interesting in the sense that uh, he's a boxer in the One Piece world. He's not a pirate, he's not a marine, he's not a revolutionary, he's just a boxer, okay? Like, that's his title. Apparently, there is a New World, like, fighting champion title match somewhere in the New World. Maybe it's on Boxing Island. There's a karate island in the South Blue, apparently, so I guess there's a Boxing Island somewhere in the New World. But yeah, there's this, I guess, uh, yearly uh, bout where the best boxers in all of the New World get together and fight, and Ideo is the two-time reigning champion of that. He, he V2 champion, so he won twice in a row. So, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming Kaido and Big Mom and all of the real heavy hitters on the revolutionary army and the marines and the warlords i'm assuming all of those guys abstained from participating in the new world title bout otherwise it, it might get now that's just not fair you know if kaido participated right but um if you basically take away all of the really strong characters in one piece Ideo is the strongest boxer, so that's something, I guess. You know, can you imagine if that One Piece RPG hits, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the kind that you're thinking of, the kind where you can design your own character to run around in the One Piece world, and you can choose, you know, what you want to be, like a Marine, or a Pirate, or a Revolutionary, and you have this giant open world to explore, that kind of game, which I'm not 100% sure is going to happen, but it should. Um, can you imagine if they give you the option, you, you can be a boxer if you want. <laughs> You could be the IDEO class, you know, all right, so IDEO was participating in Cordia Coliseum for the Mara Mara no Me, just like uh, Cavendish, just like Bartolomeo, except uh, unlike Cavendish and Bartolomeo and a lot of the other members in the Coliseum, uh, he wasn't a pirate, uh, he was from the Triple X Gym which is a gym that exists in the One Piece world. So for anybody that gets sucked into the One Piece world and is like, man, where am I going to go to to lift? Or where am I going to spend leg day? Triple X gym. It's a place that exists. I ran out of X's, so I had to use two Y's for the last one, but whatever. So that's an option, right? And, you know, okay, I mean, you have to understand, like, One Piece is more than just pirates versus marines, right? I mean, there's a whole population of just regular citizens that live in the One Piece world. You'd figure some of them would start up their own organizations. They're not going to be as prominent or as well known. And it's not like anybody was upset by this new revelation. It's not like, oh, Oda, how come you didn't explain earlier in the series that there was a new world boxing tournament every year? Because it wasn't relevant. It wasn't integral. The story of One Piece does not involve Luffy rising through the ranks of boxers, you know, decking out Soda Popinski and fighting against Mike Tyson at the end. It's not relevant, right? So, okay, fine. You just we, it, it exists now. Okay, fine. It's probably never going to be referenced again. We're probably never going to arrive at the island where the Straw Hats participate in the New World boxing match. Maybe they will. I don't know. I'd like to see Luffy and Zoro and maybe Frankie all go at it. That would be cool. Frankie has this iron boxing move. That would be neat, right? So I guess that proves boxing did exist, you know, because Frankie has moves with boxing in them. So I guess that should have probably queued us up, right? Um, yeah, but anyway, so uh, Ideo is a member of the Long Arm Tribe, but his 
body structure is a little different from the standard long arms. All the long arms we saw up to this point, like Scratchman, Apu, and also the uh, the members of the tribe that kidnapped Brooke during the time skip and everything. For one thing, they have a very like a Chinese aesthetic, and their home island, Kenzin Island, is also reminiscent of China. So Scratchman, Apu also probably came from Kenzin Island. Probably a situation very similar to Giants. You know how uh, uh, Saul was talking to Robin, like yeah, you know that might be where a lot of giants come from, Elbaf, but not every single giant does come from Albaf, okay? Not every giant is the warmongering kind. You know, Saul was a much more gentle kind of giant. Something probably very similar to Ideo, where he doesn't originate from Kenzan Island, or if he did, it was very young when he left, and he decided to forge his own path, okay? So he doesn't dress like a lot of the other long arm tribe members do. And his arms are also slightly different, because if you look at Ideo, his arms aren't much longer than a human's, but he has these, these giant, like, pistons, like, coming out of his shoulder. And it's like, what are those things? And at first, we had no idea he was even a member of the Long Arm Tribe until he revealed his uh, his secret technique. I'm not sure how legal this is in boxing, but he actually figured out a way to compress that extra, you know, joint in his arm past his shoulders. So very much like a firing piston, whenever he goes to punch somebody, he gets that, that piston, fires down, and BOOM! He launches his ultimate technique, the Destruction Cannon! BOOSH! Which gives him his epithet, Destruction Cannon Ideo! You wanna know something really messed up, though? You're gonna lose it when you get this, okay? If you think Ideo is not, like, a serious top-tier member of the One Piece world, okay, I, I know there's a lot of characters in the world that are pretty strong. You got Rayleigh, you got the Yonko, you got, you know, freaking uh, Akainu and everybody and the Admirals, but this is proof that Ideo ranks, if not higher than all of them, okay? Ideo's technique, destruction cannon. You know how he says it in Japanese? Hakai-ho! That's right, kids! He literally is like, Hakai! Boom! You know, that would be awesome! In fact, they need to do that. They need to have a scene where Ideo is squaring up against, like, a freaking Yonko or a Warlord or something, and he just, like, like puts his fist up right in front of their face, and they're like, what? Hakai! And then that piston just fires down off his shoulder and just... Boom! And just obliterates them into non-existence. So yeah, uh, he, he did some training with Beerus back in the day. He's got the Hakai Ho! Um, but yeah, I am I am a little bit disturbed about how that's possible, like the a anatomically, okay? If you have an extra joint, if you have like basically the um, part of your arm that goes from your elbow to your wrist, your wrist being just another elbow, and then it continues on, and then your hand is at the end, that's what the long arms are, but how do you get that one extra section past your shoulder? Did he just do a lot of training where he just like grabbed his arm or he maybe pressed his arm up against something like, you know, a steel plate or something and just kept pressing like, come on, come on, ah, oh yes, I have achieved my final form. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the Hakai Ho will truly be a marvelous feat now. I don't know how he did it, but it looks rather painful, but hey, you gotta train in order to get stronger, so hey, it's no pain, no gain, you know what I mean? I'm also gonna get a bunch of plus signs tattooed on my chest. That's how they'll know that I, I don't take any negatives. I, I only take positive victories. Okay, well anyway, he doesn't win the Mara Mara no me. <laughs> Big shocker there. Um, after the events of uh, the birdcage and everything, he allies with the Straw Hats to help take down Doflamingo, and he squares up against Derringer. Unfortunately, he is one of the uh, two members of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet that do not actually win a fight on their own. Him and Orlumbus get taken down by the members of the crew, respectively. And so Ideo gets taken out by Derringer. So we didn't have, like, Hyrudeen and Cavendish and Bartolomeo had the really epic brawls, but we don't got that from, from Ideo. Ideo de didn't have the epic, like, battle against Derringer where it's like, Hakai Ho! Boom! And then, like, obliterated Derringer. Like, half his chest is just wiped out. And then he gets sent flying and smacks into the birdcage. No, we didn't get that. Um, Ideo got dropped by him, and then he was immediately taken out by uh, Hakuba when uh, Cavendish went into his form. He got sliced up by that. So, um, yeah, that sucks for Ideo. And we didn't really get a lot of other things involving Ideo. We never had, like, a Baby 5 moment where it's like we found out about Ideo's backstory. Although Oda did draw him as a child, so... There you go, that, that, that's something. 
actually now that i'm looking at that it does look like his attire is more chinese so yeah probably he did grow up on kenzen island he just decided at some point just to leave and join the boxing circuit he's like maybe everybody else wanted him to like do traditional long arm things but he's like no screw you mom and dad i want to be a boxer why would you want to be a boxer you know you need to you're a member of the proud long arm tribe you need to uh you, you need to uh, kidnap skeletons, I guess, and force them to be rock and roll legends. That's, that's the whole goal of our entire culture. <laughs> It's like, no, I'm going to join the Triple X Alliance. And at that point, they're like, you're going to join the Triple X Alliance. Did you, uh, are you into porn, son? <laughs> you know, because that's, that's what it means, Triple X. You know, you think porn immediately, so who knows? I don't, but, you know, maybe IDEO also does Moonlights as something else. I don't know what's going on. But uh, anyway, after the fight was over, they healed up at the castle, and they decided to all set sail. Now, even at this point, he still did not become a straight-up pirate. Okay, so, like, even, you know, like, Leo as well. Leo wasn't a pirate either. He later got his own pirate ship, and, like, the Tontata crew was formed. But when, um... Ideo was sailing out. He didn't even have, I think, a proper ship. I'm not sure how he got to Dressrosa. Maybe he arrived, because he's a regular citizen, really. Like I said, he's not a pirate, so he could travel to, like, a regular cruise ship to go to Dressrosa to participate in the in the Colosseum fight. That's probably what he did. But then everything happened with Doflamingo, and he decided to set out to sea on his own. However, he didn't form a pirate crew. He formed the Triple X Gym Martial Arts Alliance. That's kind of a kind of a mouthful, but don't worry. Later on, he just decides to cut the middleman out and just call himself the Ideo Pirates. So there you go. But before that, the Triple X Gym Martial Arts uh, Martial Arts Alliance had uh, Blue Gilly on it. Blue Gilly was a long leg tribe member that also participated in the Cordia Coliseum. He didn't really do much throughout the course of the arc. Don't worry if you don't remember him. And then you also had Abdul and Jeet, which helped out Luffy during the you know, when they were racing up the mountain. You know, it was him and Lucy and uh, you know Abdul and Jeet that were helping them out kind of get up there. And they even took out one of Doflamingo's Black Knights at one point. So, yay for Abdul and Jeet. But uh, anyway, yeah, they decided to set out to sea. And the only other information we really get on them is during their cover serial. And Oda took their cover serial actually in a direction I did not expect it to be. You know, because it's like, Ideo, I'll be honest with you, is the one that I care the least about. You know, like Leo in the Tontadas, at least you have the idea like, oh, these are a completely new species that we never even knew about in One Piece. You know, the dwarves, the Tontatas, so that's interesting to see what they're up to. And you know, even Orlumbus had his epic adventures in the daily life of being a pirate, but okay, Orlumbus gets some extra points just because he has that massive fleet at his command. Even if, and Orlumbus was the other member that didn't manage to defeat a member of the Doflamingo family head on, but it's like, he has a massive fleet of like 5,000 men and a boatload of ships boatload of ships okay fine whatever so it's like he has he's interesting from that perspective alone but ideo is just like i'm a boxer and hey uh you know orlumbus can i have a ship and orlumbus gave him a ship and they're like okay cool and he just decided to set sail and blue gilly and abdul and jeet i guess didn't have anywhere else to go so they had a choice they could either i guess join up with orlumbus's crew or go with ideo or I guess, I guess they could have picked anybody, like Surimon decided to tag along with Cavendish for some reason. I don't know, they probably could have picked, like, anybody wants to go with, you know, wants to take us, we could, but they decided to set out on their own. So in the cover series, the Triple X Gym Martial Art Alliance uh, stopped by an island in the New World. They're just sailing along and they see this island. And on this island, there's a conflict between the Long Arm Tribe member and the Long Leg Tribes members, okay? And they're just brawling. Okay, apparently both of their ships wrecked on this island, and now they're just there, and they're just fighting with each other because there's this centuries-long grudge between both tribes, okay? It's like, it kind of honestly reminds me of that episode of Rick and Morty when they're on that hive mind planet, uh, Unity, and everybody on that planet just looks the same. They have, like, blue hair and blue skin. Like, everybody has the same skin color, but their nipples are different, and so the people that have, like, these shaped nipples are, uh, you know, fighting against against these other people's like oh you have those kind of nipples we have these kind of those are the only differences we have well that's big enough of a difference to hate each other for it 
So that's basically kind of the same thing with the long arm and the long legs. It's like, we look exactly the same, except you got long legs, you weird freaks of nature. <laughs> He's like, yeah, well, at least we don't have extra joints in our arms, you sick. And they just start fighting each other. And so Ideo and his crew arrive on the island. And at first you think they're going to try to open up a dialogue. Like they're going to play like uh, uh, King Solomon here with the bread or something. You're just like, you two need to learn to get along. But they don't don't. They take the parts of each ship, make the individual tribes fix up the Ideo pirate's ship, and then they decide just to set sail and leave the bickering tribes on the island in their own hatred. Just awash in it. It's like, alright, well, thanks for fixing up our ship. We're officially the Ideo pirates now. And it's like, alright, well, what are we gonna do? I'll be like, I don't know, you can kill each other here for all I care. Let's get out of here. And they just sail off! And so, um, it's interesting. It's really interesting. It's kind of a commentary on race relations that I think Oda was going with here. You know, like, the long legs and the long arms, they look pretty much exactly the same, except one tribe has longer arms and one tribe has longer legs, but they hate each other for it. And we don't know what the, what the beginnings of this conflict is. Maybe there was something really stupid that happened, like, 800 years ago like a long leg tribe member stepped on a long armed tribe member while they were sleeping and they just from that moment on just hated each other in perpetuity but it doesn't it's not the case with every single one like for example Ideo is the perfect example Ideo is a long arm tribe member that has blue gilly a long leg tribe member on his crew and they seem to get along perfectly fine. They're not arguing all the time on the ship. They they get along. So, yeah. And now they are officially a pirate crew. I decided, I guess they decided just to stop with the whole, it's like, Captain, what exactly does a triple X gym martial artist alliance do? It's like, well, I'll tell you what we do, uh, Jeet. What we do is we train every day, and uh, we, we build up our muscles, and then we participate in the new world boxing match title bout. And, like, maybe Blue Gilly and Abdul and Jeet were just, like... M maybe they went along with him for a little while, but then they're just like, Captain, that we really aren't interested in boxing at all. And, uh, and, and, and Blue Gilly comes up, he's like, I'm into, uh, you know, kickboxing. Can we kickbox? And Ideo's like, no kickboxing! Just, okay, you know what? Screw it. Just screw the whole thing. Just... We're the freaking Ideo Pirates now. That's all you need to worry about. They're the Ideo Pirates. Ugh! So, uh, yeah, and then they uh, sailed off into the sunset, leaving the two tribes to possibly die of dehydration or starvation, whatever happens first. I mean, it depends if they're into cannibalism or not. And they just leave them on that island, and they just go away. And that's the last time we saw him, so yeah. Um, not really much else to talk about. None of the members of his crew have devil fruits. The most interesting thing about Ideo is the fact he has the Hakai powers, uh, and he has the destruction cannon, which, by the way, that thing really does pack a wallop. That thing is, like, literally, like, firepower. Like, I don't know if he packs freaking, like, gunpowder into his boxing gloves or whatever, but it's just like, Frick! Boom! And it just obliterates anything it hits. So, yeah. As for Blue Gilly, I mean, he's pretty talented, too, in martial arts. It's just that we didn't really get to see a lot of stuff that he could do because the Doflamingo family is a lot stronger than him, obviously. I mean, his superior kickboxing skills won't get him very far. You know what I mean? But, uh, hey, yeah, I could, I could be interested in seeing them again, although I have a feeling... Whenever that moment happens in the series, that big moment that everybody's talking about when the Grand Fleet will be part of that huge uh, uh, change of events in the One Piece world. Maybe it's when the Straw Hats arrive at Raftal. That's when all the Grand Fleet members arrive to help out Luffy. I, I am going to say, though, that out of all of the members of the Grand Fleet, if there was anyone that was going to be taken out first as like, Oh, the Grand Fleet is here! They will fight for the Straw Hats! The first fleet that's probably going to get taken out is Ideo's fourth fleet, because I think that's the one that Oda didn't give that much, you know, he, he didn't really talk about much, he didn't really give a lot of backstory. Maybe he will, maybe we'll give some backstory to Ideo eventually, find out how he loved to box or something, I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I feel like he was has the least development, so he's going to get taken out first. But uh, I would like to see him maybe take... I mean, he took out some enemies in the arc. It's not like he was completely useless. It's just, you know, he was taking out Riff Raff and everything with his boxing skills. He's superior in that 
capacity but once you get to any stronger opponent he's not gonna last and he is the v2 champion of the of the title bout for the new world once again probably not a lot of really heavy hitters participated as like if edward weevil decided to join like mama i want to be a boxer and be like okay dear we can you can be a boxer until we get to our next island and he's like yay and he goes and participates and he decks out his opponent and also obliterates the ring and obliterates the island that the ring was on all in one attack. Um, but I'm sure that title bout was also like, you know, not just for any kind of free-for-all like Corridia Coliseum. I'm sure you weren't allowed to use Devil Fruits or anything like that. Like, it's only for people that have, you know, really trained in the art of boxing. That's what that Triple X title match was really for. In which case, Ideo is the best of that group, but that doesn't really get him very far when you compare him to the rest of the One Piece world. But okay, so uh, we only have two members of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet remaining. We got Sai and the Ippo Navy and uh, the Kano Kingdom, and then we have Orlumbus, who is the, the Pirate Admiral. So um, Sai is three, and Orlumbus is seven. Uh, so let's just make this simple. If it's one to three, it's Psy, and if it's four through six, it's Orlumbus. I think that makes sense, so let's just go with that. Let's roll the dice. It's three! So we got Psy coming up next, and Orlumbus is dead last. Sorry, Orlumbus, but don't worry. I got a video planned for you, buddy. You're gonna get an epic video. Or you don't mess with this man right here. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna get going now. I, I got a match I need to participate in, and, and by match, I mean it's, it's, it's punch out. I've been stuck on King Hippo for, like, three years, but he's going down today.